Welcome to the unboxing review of the Ace Pen 2151 graphics drawing tablet. So those lovely people over at GearBest.com said, Mikey, would you like to do a review of the Ace Pen 2151 if we sent one over to you? And as I've had a look at their lower end model before, the 2150, I was keen to see how they compare. Now links of course are in the description below, but it's also worth mentioning that GearBest are currently running a massive discount against a wide range of gadgets, phones and laptops. Just look at all this. And as well as that, they've got a limited time flash sale going on right now across most of their electronics. So yeah, go take a look. Anywho, so this is what you can expect through the door and everything is inside a relatively plain warehouse box. Inside, there's a good amount of packaging for the tablet and bits and you also get a slip which contains the installation driver CD and a setup guide. Then you've also got a separate cardboard box inside of all of the bits and peripherals. You get a drawing glove to protect the screen from your filthy hands and what looks like a material pouch to house the pen and then separately each plastic wrapped is a power plug, a USB pen charger, a USB to USB connection cable, a HDMI cable for the screen itself, the 2048 levels pressure pen and your fairly standard pen holding pot that comes with a load of spare nib tips on the inside and then of course the plug socket as well. Underneath the foam packing inside a separate plastic wrapping is then the tablet screen itself with a nice smooth finish and an unusual looking stand. It's got a peel off protective layer and under that another very fine layer that you're supposed to leave on. So it is a fairly simple setup out of the box. You've got yourself the Ace Pen 2151 itself, the drawing pen, drawing glove, USB and HDMI connection cables to plug it in, the pen pouch, setup guide, power cables and installation driver CD. And interestingly, this is the higher end tablet compared to the 2150, but it does come with less promotional bumps like that feather pen you'll never use that was included with the other tablet and this kind of has a bit more of a straight to work professional feel. So in terms of first impressions, I wanted to show how the Ace Pen 2151 graphics drawing monitor fits with its 21.5 inch 1080p screen on a small desk and how it looks next to a 27 inch monitor. As you can see as usual, it's in my relatively small workspace. Now this monitor has a rubber bar at the lower part of its stand, which means you can lean it up flat. And also one of the first things I noticed is that next to my main monitor, this drawing tablet has a really vivid color range. It's actually got a much wider gamut and a much nicer image than the one I'm used to. And that's quite a feat as some of the tablets that I come across are ever so slightly darker or unsaturated, all kind of as part of a result of the hardware design to make it also register a pen as well. Also the screen's projected image feels like it's almost right on the surface of this tablet instead of being set deeper in. It's got a really wide viewing angle as well as a much thinner profile than most drawing monitors in this price range and a nice suit metal effect dark grey housing. To set it up you've got to connect it with the HDMI cable to work just as a screen, the USB connection cable to get it to work as a tablet as well and of course the power cable to plug it in. And another simple feature you don't actually get on most tablets like this is it's got an audio out port. This essentially means that you can use this tablet as your main monitor and plug it directly into your speakers or headphones from the back instead of having to do it from the sound card or aux input in the back of your computer. It's a minor but very convenient convenient desktop option. Then it should just be a simple case of whacking in the driver CD and installing the software to get cracking, but I did actually find this wasn't as simple as expected, so I'm going to discuss this in more detail later in the video and what troubleshooting I had to go through to make everything behave. This monitor screen has a really flush and untroubled design and its power and monitor adjustment buttons are actually set along the back instead of the bottom edge. It makes them a little bit more fiddly to operate, but it does already have a great colour and visual temperature so there was actually nothing I needed to adjust as it came out of the box. And as well as this really sleek design to the screen it also has a stand which is an upgraded version of the quick release mechanism you're going to see pretty much all the time on similar monitors like this. It's easy and quick to adjust but the bottom section is also hinged and capable of folding all the way back. And this gives you loads of different options as to how you might want to set this screen up as it can sit right up as you might expect as well as
while it's actually managing to work fairly well at a really low angle. Both the rear and bottom legs have rubber grips and I got no slipping or shifting which is good on the desk and despite the screen being an ample 21 and a half inches the stand does really take the brunt of the force just fine when leaning on the screen at different angles. Again only really getting a little bit of flex when I'm throwing some weight into the extreme corners which isn't actually an area you're going to be leaning your weight into when working. Because of its fin design and the fact that the leads go into the rear side of the back port instead of straight into the bottom it still sits really nice nicely at its lowest drawing angle as well. But when fiddling about with the stand options do be careful not to pinch or snag any of the wires in general. With the function buttons facing the rear instead of the bottom it does allow you as well with that stand to sit the tablet flush and flat onto the desk but personally I'd advise against doing that because it might put some wear along the bottom edge. And also just a point worth mentioning is that if you're going to be adjusting this and moving it around the place a lot do be careful not to accidentally peel away that second screen protection layer as you do do want to make sure that thing stays on. The 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity pen is a fairly standard affair that you're going to find for tablets like this across the range. It's a single type of silicone grip which runs for most of the length and comes with two programmable buttons. The click on them is okay and the flared wider end before the nib is there to help with the grip and also keep the pen comfortable to hold for a longer period of time. It charges from the end via a USB cable with an indicator light to let you know when you're done and as mentioned it does come with a weighted pot to both stick it in on the desk which also houses a series of spare nibs as well as that little metal clip in the middle to get the nibs in and out of the pen. Oh and by the way the pen doesn't fit inside this pouch so I'm not actually sure what it's for. So that's it for the main impressions on the bits and of course in order to actually get a feel for things as an artist instead of just sprouting off of raw data I sat down for a couple of hours to actually see what this tablet is like to use. So the screen scratch texture to the pen itself is absolutely fine. It's not quite the flawless texture that I've had on some other tablets but you certainly don't find yourself scratching away or digging in at all and the screen didn't feel like it was overheating either which is great. However I did have a challenging time getting the setup to work properly which is definitely worth a mention. Now straight out of the box and setting the tablet up as my second monitor was easy. Windows 10 recognized it without a problem and as mentioned the colors on the screen as well as the physical design of this thing is lovely. The problem for me came when I was trying to to install it with the driver to get the pressure pen itself to work. The driver on the CD and its setup software are clearly quite dated and Ace Pen do not have a website that you can download a latest version from. In fact they've barely got a website at all. And as well as things like Photoshop not registering any of the pressure sensitivity, even the monitor calibration software tool itself that comes with the driver CD simply wouldn't work. And I tried some different cables and even an alternative driver software made by UG which is a very similar setup and all of the other basic troubleshooting things until I finally realized the issue. Essentially this monitor is quite good but it does not play well with friends. The only way I found to make it behave was to to reinstall everything from scratch, unplug the other screen altogether and plug in the 2151 into the primary HDMI port making it the only main monitor I was using with my computer. Once I did this instantly the calibration tools worked just fine and Photoshop recognized the pressure range and Windows Ink immediately. And after that it was smooth sailing to use the tablet itself. But if you are a creative visual type or in some professional field you'll probably find that you tend to extend your desktop across two Two different monitor screens and if you're going to try to do that here you're going to have a bad time. Now as a disclaimer this might be an issue which is only unique to myself or even simply a Windows update on my computer which has created the problem against some driver software which isn't really keeping pace. But I am relatively experienced when it comes to using a different range of tablets and I've not had any other trouble quite like this with any other monitor before. And that's the part that kind of breaks my heart because Ace Pen have an okay introductory tablet in the 2150. It's solid and will do the job. And the Ace Pen 2151 really should be its higher end, slightly better quality, sleeker, older brother. It's clear in the design, the screen quality and that really flush front finish that that's what Ace Pen are aiming for in this product. 
but personally I found it was all undermined by that compatibility issue of the driver across two monitors. But having got it to work it was then very nice to use. I do always say that the odd quick access button down the side of the tablet screen would be welcome just to stop me from reaching back to the keyboard all the time, but I think design wise here Ace Pen did have a strong intent that this tablet should also be able to sit simply as a main monitor as well, so they kept it simple and very flush for that reason. And again as a main monitor for maybe whacking a film onto it is very nice. A spare pen would certainly be a welcome addition as well for a setup like this, but other than that in the driver situation I didn't really have any other complaints. So in terms of my overall impression of the tablet, well it is actually really nice. It looks great on the desk, I like the materials, it's got a crazy vibrant screen which is better than my normal monitor and a really good stand to actually use it in quite a flexible range of positions with. But the only situation I could recommend this in however is if you want a tablet drawing monitor screen which is also going to function really well as your main but also as your only monitor. If that's the case, if it's going to be this screen, the computer, the keyboard and pretty much nothing else, then yeah, it's a nice bit of kit and it will look after you. But if you're anything like me, you're not going to be able to use it as an extended desktop with another screen and not having access to any updated Ace Pen drivers really does let it down. Now remember, this is just one tablet of many, many options out there and it goes without saying a great big thank you to those lovely people over at Gearbest.com for sending me the Ace Pen 2151 graphics drawing tablet over for review. Now at Gearbest.com there are a huge range of excellent tablets at the lowest prices on their website so do give a click on the link below and take a look. And this is actually where I got my tablet from, the Huion I like to use all of the time and it's really worth comparing the prices because this website is a fair bit cheaper. And again on top of that they've got their flash sale on this week with some crazy price drops as well so again don't miss out, see what's going on. So thanks a lot for watching guys and girls, I really do hope you found this unboxing review to be useful if you're in the market for a desktop tablet and you're trying to work out what's out there and how they all compare. Of course if you have any questions or even better any advice then get yourself into the comments section below, click that subscribe button and I'll see you for more reviews and unboxings in the future. Take care.